Uh, so one person from each of the groups is going to come up and talk us through the array. And I think that what we will do in order to help us in our comparing of them is we'll take them in chunks. So first we'll have somebody come up and talk through the belief template for John, the belief template for Jean, and then the belief template for Barbara. Okay, And then we'll, we'll do some compar comparing between those. And then we'll do the same thing with the strategies and so on. Uh, now the prefatory remarks I want to make about what we're doing now is here we are, ga we are gathering, we've gathered information from three different people uh, using this ability or uh, manifesting this ability in three different contexts. I fully anticipate, in fact I already know because I walked around to the groups, that there are going to be things that are the same. There will be patterns that are the same across all three of these. Um, when you are uh, gathering information from your exemplar, your allegiance is to the exemplar. That is, that you want that you want to make sure that whatever you end up with on the paper on in the array is something that the exemplar can look at and go, yes, that's me. That's me. So your, your allegiance is to their experience, to the exemplar. All right? Now we're done with that. Now we've moved on to pulling out the patterns across exemplars. Now our allegiance is not to the exemplars. Our allegiance is to the model. Okay? So what that means is that whereas before, in get, working with our exemplar, we wouldn't think of saying, oh, no, that's not the criterion. The cri that's really the motivating cause effect or something like that. Now we can do that. <laughs> because we're going to be looking across all three of these and going, OK, what's similar or the same about them? And how can we now capture that into, into one description that works for all of them? Now, in, in doing that, that, we are not likely, it's not necessarily the case, I should say, that even if they all have the same criterion, that it's in the same place. In other words, um, uh, so here in this one in genes, I, I really haven't looked through these, but here we've got in genes, he's got something he's talking about uh, uh, honoring his integrity. All right? Maybe we'll find honoring integrity in, in the other two as well, but in different places, maybe in the motivating cause effect or down in the definition or in, this, in the uh, su supporting belief. All right? So the fact that we find, something, we, we find something in different places doesn't mean that they are not the same. Uh, that is that just you know, one particular group in the way that they interacted with their exemplar where it made sense to them at the time to put that information was in that box. And in this other group, where it made sense to put the same kind of information was in a different box. You follow me? So now we have this very kind of artistic uh, uh, enterprise in front of us of, of kind of stepping back from them as individuals and just taking in the patterns, where, what patterns do we find, regardless of where they are, what patterns do we find you know, across all three of these, and what are those, how would we characterize, best characterize those patterns, characterize it as criterion, characterize it as a cause effect, characterize it as a piece of strategy or whatever. Kind of get the idea? So it's a free-for-all, all right? We're going to go into a, a, mob, a mob scene here. Well, that means we're getting down to business. You know, I ain't kidding around now. <laughs> All right, so let's start uh, over with John. Um, so who's, uh, Sandra, are you going to yeah. do this? Take us through, talk us through uh, John's yeah. belief template. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You what? I don't like to be on the TV. 
<laughs> oh, well, that's, well, how smart of you then to volunteer to do this, yeah. okay. since you don't like being on TV. <laughs> what else don't you like? Let, me, let us know so that we can make sure to set you up for it. Okay. <laughs> Now you gotta talk. It's going to read. <laughs> it ain't gonna do it for you. Hello, Dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's quite difficult. <laughs> so, we are starting. We are starting with John, and John's, ab uh, John's ability is to let go of alcohol. Okay. So at first. Um, I want you to mm, describe his criterion for disability is to saving his life. Mm -hmm. And about the definition, he said, <laughs> envisioning a loss of everything that he hold dear. So yeah. saving my life is envisioning a loss of everything I hold dear. Yeah. Okay. That's the definition he said. Um, this is his evidence and it's quite clear because he said people were telling me very clearly that I would lose everything. So this is evidence and of his ability. Um, about an in enabling cause effect, he said that if other people can do it, then he could do it. Mm -hmm. His motivation was uh, to move away from the pain that he was causing so that he could continue the life that he enjoyed. Okay, is it clear? Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so, so that I'm clear, yeah. so in this period of time mm -hmm. when he was struggling with whether or not to let go yeah. and how to let go of this, yeah. this uh, uh, drinking, yeah. Uh, uh, the the criterion that John was holding was that of saving yeah. my life, yeah. right? And he had that if other people can do it, I can do it, yeah. right? Uh, and that it was important to him to save his life, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that he could move, move away, away from, from what the pain he, he was causing, moving away from the pain pain he was causing, yeah. And this, was this pain in himself or pain in others or both? Or? Uh, pain, first of all, in others. Uh -huh. And then in himself. Okay. Uh -huh. And I so think. he could have the life, have a, continue to have a life yeah. that he enjoyed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Because um, here he made an example of his wife. At first, he was worried about um, his relationship with his wife. So the pain he was causing to his wife and his marriage. Mm -hmm. And then he started to um, think about um, which kind of life he wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All right. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we put here, um, how do you call it? Supporting, Supporting belief. belief. And... Uh, this is a sort of auditory belief. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, he said uh, that he used to repeat in his mind what's left, this question. For him, it was really important. And um, he thought about suicide. In fact, he says um, committing suicide if this 
would come to pass. If what would come to pass? Yeah. If what is it that would come to pass that would cause him to commit suicide? Uh, drinking. To continue drinking. To, to continue to drinking. Okay. okay. And then this is another important belief for John. Uh, life is so much easier without alcohol. So we put them in his supporting belief. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. So let's 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 look at the belief template now t for Jean. Okay. All right. Who, who's going to do that? Jean. Okay. We, if you think we need it in order to un, uh, understand what you're going to describe, yeah. Just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jean and two partners had a theater company for several years that presented um, stories uh, from their culture, the Native, Native American culture of some of the tribes of Alaska. And um, that company was very dear to his heart, a big part of his identity, because those stories are close to his heart. Um, the conflict was the stories were about a certain way of living, but behind the scenes there was all this conflict going on among the partners in the troupe, which wasn't uh, um, congruent. congruent with what they were showing on the stage. So they kept getting all this positive feedback about all this beauty and one wonderful integrity on the stage, but behind the scenes was all this other stuff. And that conflict was um, huge for Gene. And so the letting go had to do with letting go of the theater company, basically. Okay? Uh, so when asked what was the most important element during the conflict and the letting go, the thing he identified was um, to honor the integrity of who he was. That was the heart and the thing that he was most important to pay attention to and the thing that made the biggest difference. And the way he described that, uh, to honor the integrity of who he is, it's about being, uh, being truthful and honest about who he is as a person based on the values and beliefs uh, that are part of him through growing up in the family and in the people that he grew up in. And then the evidence that he is living, uh, honoring that integrity, is there is this um, sense of freedom. And he was real graphic about that. All of this conflict and the discontinuity between backstage and front stage was a huge thing on his shoulders that just weighed him down tremendously. And so there's a sense of freedom, there's this lightness, and a sense of relief. There's a whole sense of recovering his sense of healthiness. Um, the other things which were also very, very fascinating, he talked about the other systems. He said the auditory thing, in the conflict, there was all this inner confusion in his head. Ideas were fuzzy, ideas were in conflict, the voices were. And when he finally let go, there was a certain sort of clarity auditorily that happened. And the same thing visually. There's all this stuff all over his visual screen that didn't go together. And when he finally let go, there was a clarity about vision also that came with that. So those are all things that uh, gave evidence that, um, of this uh, happening. Uh, the thing that he had to believe uh, in order for this to be the criterion is that he had to be honest with himself. That was the enabling criteria. Uh, in living in a way that honors the integrity of who he is, the thing that he believed then that makes possible is the, the final thing is that he's free to be who he is. And for him, some of the elements of that is being a healer, being creative, um, and, and growing and developing. Those were sort of the way, some of the ways he specified that. Um, underlying supporting beliefs that sort of run through the whole thing were um, 
out of his culture the honoring of, and the responsibility you have to honor your ancestors and the values of that. He is sort of a, uh, the representative of those people. And so the way he is is the way that those people get presented. And underneath that also is a belief that is sort of has a real spirit, strong spiritual basis that he's going to be OK. What's that mean, I'm going to be OK? Uh, actually, it means he's going to be OK in every way, that he's going to be OK inside. And even in the outer world, he's going to be OK. Anybody have any questions about that? Or any additions from my partners or team members or our exemplar? <laughs> any clarifications? Good. And Barbara. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, um, hi. Let me give you this little. Let me give the little sticky song. Um, a little bit of background about Barbara, who so kindly shared with us her story. Um, she was married for thirty-two years. Uh, and there came a point at which she um, felt compelled to move out of the marriage. And essentially what she shared with us is how she did that. Um, in terms of the criteria, the one that came up again and again, the criterion that was central to her doing this, um, was to get out. Is it okay if I share a little bit more about get out of what? Um, a s sweet, caring man that you were married to who was also an alcoholic and very much dependent on Barbara. So a, a large part of her life was about taking care of him, being responsible for him and, um, and their children. Yeah. So this, this was a recurring theme again and again was this, this criterion of to get out. And what she meant by that or what she, uh, was to be free to be me. That was what she was saying. Free of those responsibilities, because those responsibilities were such a huge burden on her. The evidence that she looked for, in, uh, that she would see um, to show that she had got out, would be the internal voice, you're doing a good job, you can do it. Um, I guess that's a process comment. Um, she would see herself standing alone, meaning independently, and uh, feeling strong and powerful. Okay. Uh, now, I'm, as I look at this now, I'm wondering how this got in here. Um, <laughs> 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 Who wrote that in there? Um, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, isn't it funny? Yes. Yeah, so I think we might need to revisit that one. <laughs> Not too late. Mm, yeah. So looking at that now, uh, Barbara, I, I don't know what comes, and, and the group we were working with, perhaps we can rethink that one. It says um, that what enabled, in a sense, what enabled her to get out, so it's actually strategy, and it's, it's over here, was planning, personal awareness, and support system. Those were the enabling strategies, actually. We've got them over here. Somehow they ended up here, too. Um, how would you think about that now, Barbara? Don't press me. OK. <laughs> and what about the group? We, uh. Well, can I let me yes. ask, we, let's, since we're on that right now, yes. let's just ask Barbara some okay. questions. So, so Barbara, is it the case that in order to get out of something, that is, in order to be free to be yourself, does one have to plan in order to be oneself? Well, how do you know? In that case, but now we're talking beliefs, so we're at a level of its generalization. Okay. So just this question, the question I'm asking you now is, does one need to plan in order to be free to be yourself? No. 
Uh -huh. So one needs to be safe mm. to be free to be yourself. So that, to me, there's an enabling cause effect. And the planning part is the strategy piece. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you're getting too wild with that pen there, kiddo. <laughs> Right? Uh, now, how about personal awareness? Does one need to be personally aware in order to be free to be oneself? I, think. I agree. Yes, see, that belongs there. <laughs> 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 well, that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, does one need to have a support system in order to be free to be oneself? I did. You did in this instance. I did. Uh, Does one? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I don't know how many people. I think we need some kind of support. I don't know what, where you get that. Uh -huh. Spiritual or. Um, need some kind of support. Good. Stop. Okay. Well, no, I would put some kind. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then moving on to where, yeah, the motivating uh, cause and effect. So in order to get out, oh, sorry, the reason why she wanted to get out was so that she could fully participate in her life and not be a victim. So there was that, exactly your words, both towards and away from. And then this came up later. Um, the more I let go, the more I feel free. I'm not sure. We, we put it here. And that she did this for her kids. That was highly motivating. In fact, that came out later that that was more powerful than for herself. And we put that down as a, as a supporting belief as well. Uh, in her supporting belief, she's got that she needed to know that she could. She had to model something else for her daughters. That was a very powerful belief. Hmm? Uh, I, I don't, why not in orange is this? I needed to know I could. I will. I'll Thank do you. it. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Do you know? And she was very insistent that uh, it was really important that she modeled something else for her daughters, not just her children, but daughters. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so now, uh, so starting just with that much, do you, are there any uh, commonalities? Do you see any patterns uh, across two or three of these? Yes, Dan. So there's always a crisis point. There's like, I've had enough. And Where do you see that? In the well, in <clears throat> Barbara's was 32 years, and then... Um, Jean's was three or four, and John's was a number of years, too, where they just said there was a point where, because they all compared their current life to their past life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it said, I can't do this anymore. So there's a break point where some, there was something that, that said, I, up with this, I okay. can no longer play. All right, so then I'm just going to write down this break point here. Because that, that, what you're talking about now came out of the descriptions of the situations that they were in or went through. That's not up in the uh, belief templates. But it is in the descriptions. Uh -huh. All right? So I want to put it there because that may well be something that we'll want to uh, capture in the final model. How about in across in these, in these belief templates? What do you notice? Any similarities? So ex explain. Honoring the integrity of who you are is taking care of himself. Saving his life is taking care of himself. And to get out for her definition of it is in a way that he's taking care of himself. Uh-huh. Okay. So I should have paper to write on, should yeah. I not? <laughs> oh, look at this. Ask and I shall receive. A 
I've got blue tape. <laughs> Aren't I a smart ass sometimes? <laughs> All right, so let's, you know, I don't know what will survive, but let's take notes of what it is we're, we're finding here. So one thing is uh, the, the criterion um, is about taking care of oneself. Is that how you would put it? About caring for oneself. Now that seems... Um, Significant. Well, I, I can imagine that being significant. Good. What else? I notice in each case the motivation seems to be um, both a, war a way in towards. In each case? Um, we've got in John's case so that he could. I can't read it all now, but well, I remember that he wants to enjoy his right. life. Right. Continue to enjoy his life and go what away from the pain, pain. he was causing. And, and in um, Barbara's, we've got that so she can fully participate, participate in her life not, and not be a victim, mm -hmm. uh, and um, so on. Uh, what about Jean's, though? His is free to be me, heal, grow, be creative, free to be who I am. Okay. So, I can... so not necessarily, in our view. Huh? Now, that doesn't mean, it's not, doesn't mean it's not true for Jean as well. Huh? Well, that. And you didn't pick that up, but I mean, that was part of the choice. He's moving away from all the pain that came with not being completely seen and being taken. So that makes, the, that makes the point I was just about to make, which is that um, when you're comparing across individuals, comparing their uh, um, arrays, the information, just because you find that, particularly if you find one thing in two of them, but not in the third. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a pattern. It may be that it is true for that third person, but it simply did not, you didn't notice it, it didn't get recorded, uh, it maybe it's appearing somewhere else in the array. So don't, necess don't jump to the conclusion that it's not there. You want to test it out and find out. And so we actually did get feedback here that in both cases, their motivation was built um, built on both away from and towards. Okay. Can I have another one of these? Oh, great! Thank you. The <laughs> You got a thing for orange, do you? All right, what else? What else? Yeah, and what? Maybe there is, I, I think there is a, a point where we can say it's a decisive point for each of them. That they have to test and do it. You're going to have to give me an example. A decision point was made. There was a decision point for each one of them. That's right. The question is, what is it that made it possible to make that decision to let go? So we know they all made these decisions. Otherwise, they wouldn't be exemplars. These wouldn't be examples. Yeah. So you got the next one? Mm -hmm. Children are now about allowing to really feel that they can be who they believe they are as a person. Exactly. Now, this, this seems to me to... so. Honoring the integrity of who I am, being truthful about who I am as a person, who I am, you know, who you are as a person. Being free to be me. Uh-huh. Do you see the, <laughs> I think that's a big thing here. If she says, oh, I want to get out, that's what's important is get out. However, uh, this to me is actually the the goal. I wouldn't say that's the criterion, you know, strictly. I think the criterion is more about something about, you know, am I being myself? Am I free? You know, I'm not free. I'm confined. I'm contained. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that there is, you know, one of the things that is the same about there is that something that's of, you know, that the criterion that's being violated in these two cases, the criterion that's being violated by staying with whatever it is, not letting go, is that of I'm not being myself. I'm not being myself. I'm violating who I am. You, you guys see me? And it's in whatever brings them, makes it possible for them to let go. When they get to the point of letting go, that's the fulfill, that is fulfilling uh, that criterion. I am now free to be myself. In letting go, I'm being myself, and I'm now free to be myself. You guys? It's about, I'm free to be a me. <laughs> for, there to be, for there to be a me. <laughs> uh-huh. So, now, now so what, what Diane's doing is, and this is another part of the artistic um, enterprise that we're engaged in, is she's starting to kind of pull and push around, you know, the information we have. Now, a co we would be in a much better position to do that if, all, if we were all privy, a part of each, all of these elicitations, then we would each have a direct, a whole experience of who this person is and what's behind these words. So we would be much, we would be standing on much firmer ground for doing just what you're doing. And it's, and, and it's okay to do what you're doing. Um, and I'm not, and I absolutely wouldn't argue with you about it. You weren't in this group, were you? Were you in John's group? No. Yeah. I wasn't. Uh -huh. You and Jesus. So, um, uh, what you're suggesting is, is that uh, be who I am as a person. Well, I, you know, that's a stretch. Let's see. Very. Let's see. Very clearly, I would lose everything. What's left? Committing suicide. I mean, this is this is the. Complete utter, committing suicide is the ultimate denial of self. Um, the people I can do it, then I can do suicide. I could continue the life that I enjoyed. So here, though, here to me is that you know, a at least a whiff, if not the whole thing, of free to be me. You know, he's got to couch this as a life that I enjoy, but I think to me I get a sense of you know, being free to live my life because, you know, this drinking is taking away my life. I can't be, I don't have access to me in my life under alcohol. But one, so one thing, though, that comes through very strongly for me from these two is that um, there's some criterion about being who I am, you know, being who I am. And there's also... Um, And there's also this thing about free, you know, I, I'm free, free to be me, free to be who I am, uh, this is, oh, free, free, you know, we've got to pay attention to that, that word keeps coming up, uh, at least in these two. Uh, what else? How about this? Well, so here we've got honoring my family and ancestors. Do you see that anywhere else? <laughs> uh, uh, doing something for her daughters. That is, I did this for my kids. There's this sense of responsibility to others outside of you. And how about over here with John? There was this thing about yeah, the pain he was causing others. So there, there seems to be something um, also about um, uh, being, being responsible to others. All right. Okay, well, being who I am. Uh, being who I am. All right, anything else? 
Oh, oh, where? Oh. Pers excellent. Personal awareness. Have, have to be honest with myself. Yeah? Uh, now, is that over here? And I think that's pushing it, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> However, we'll, we'll come back to that in, next. An awareness? Well, there's millions of awarenesses. <laughs> this is saying something else. This is saying one has to be personally aware in order to have integrity or to be who you are. That's something that both of these people are saying. You need that. And so, um, now, of course, it may be true for John as well. You know, we could, if we were, had the time and we were doing this thoroughly, we would go back to him and check this out with him. But it comes through so, it's, it's there and it's there. You know, I never ignore that. If it turns out it's said almost the same in the same place, it's in. All right, so you need um, some kind of, I would put personal awareness, honesty, awareness and honesty is necessary. All right? It implies that you need a process for self-awareness. No. We have got No. No. I, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't imply that. I think that probably did happen. But I think the fact that he went doesn't imply that there is self-awareness. I'm sure that that, was, that, was, that is precisely one of the goals of going there and one of the things that probably did happen and helped make it possible for him to, to do this. And that's why, and I agree with you, and that's why I suspect that personal awareness and personal honesty was necessary for John as well in order to get to the point where he went, I'm leaving this. So I'm, I suspect that that's true. I just want to separate out that I don't think that's here on the page yet. OK? And so uh, we are in the land of, you know, we're, we're walking a very fine line here of going, OK, we're, we're not relying just on what's on the page. We're getting a little bit. Um, pushing things around, we're making some suppositions about what things mean and how they work, and that's okay, because what will happen ultimately is we end up with a model that we then have to test out to see if whether or not what we have created, the map we've created from them, works. But we don't want to go too far in and going, well, I know what that means. <laughs> and it, one, uh, there's another thing. Here, I'm going to be okay. Does that Barbara? I need to know I could. Right. What is this? I had. What is this? I had to. Oh, this belongs in here. I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. I need to know I could. And to me, that has very. When I try that on, that has very much the sense and experience of I'm going to be okay. Okay. Uh huh. Feel safe. Uh huh. Right. So, um, know that I can and will be okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I would put, why did I put okay rather than safe? When I'm, so it's an artistic decision on my part. Why, why would I put okay rather than safe? That's right, Anne. Sa you know, safe really narrows it down. It's got to be about being safe. But it's po very possible to know that you're going to be okay. And it's not you will, you're okay because you can handle danger and problems will happen and it doesn't matter. So uh, safety is not the issue. It's can I handle it and then I'll be okay. So yes, it's a it's a bigger frame that encompasses more experiences that people can have. 
The what? Okay, so let's make this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get cooperative uh, exemplars, it's fabulous. <laughs> Alessandro. That is, I think, the new who's a fact for John. I'm sorry? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at this. <laughs> if other people can do it, then I can too. There, I know that I can. It's right there as well. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see, can we, is there anything else we can milk out of these? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, uh, where was that? <sighs> oh, oh, that was it. Never mind. Uh, I, well, don't, don't never mind. <laughs> Remind. Um, yeah. There's, first of all, this, thing, this strong and powerful, the first hit I got off of that was actually in relation to I'm going to be okay. And I, when I got down to this, uh, you know, I feel strong and powerful, I immediately went, oh, that's the same, that's about the same thing uh, that comes from knowing I'm going to be okay. You know? So I think that that's also another place where that uh, experience is showing up in this um, uh, uh, array. Now, this. Is that healthy? Hmm? Healthy. Uh, feeling healthy? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. Standing alone. Um, now, integrity. Integ oh, oh, right. Um, this also I thought was interesting. And she's got this image, I'm standing alone. And that also to me goes right with this business of having integrity, of, you know, of being who you are. This, when she says stand alone, it's not about I'm all alone and there's nobody in my life. It's that I stand without needing or requiring the support of others. I am I am sufficient within myself to live. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And, um, and to me, that's very much the experience I get as I go through genes of honoring the integrity of who I am um, and uh, being truthful honest about who I am as a person, walking my talk. Um, so anyway, I got very much the sense of that as well in there. I, th I think we already have that up there. Okay, um, uh, okay, I think that's, unless somebody else has got some other, notice something else, but we're doing okay here. All right, let's go on to the strategy and see what we find there. So, I'm going to do John's strategy. Alessandra? As primary strategies, John said that um, at a certain point when he decided to break that state, he, he said he had to look at surviving today. It means that uh, at the day when he decided to give up with alcohol, he, the first Thing that he has in his mind was to pay attention to surviving day by day, step by step, minute by minute, hours by hours. Okay? And then he said that um, he was important to narrow in his scope by assigning priorities about what he worried about. 
and that is strictly linked with the step-by-step. Um, -step. It means that uh, there is a sort of um, sequence. And, and then he said, um, this sort of question, am I staying with those priorities or moving from them? Now, I can't remember uh, those priority. Uh, he, uh, these are new priorities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you wrote those, the down same the, pri the same yeah. priorities as above there. That's right. When he assigns the priorities, he was staying with those priorities, or was he moving from them? Okay. So this is keeping him on track. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. As secondary strategies, at first, um, if uh, he wouldn't work, work is right. He wouldn't work. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, if it wasn't working. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, he decided to talk to supported person. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then um, go to an A.8 meeting, anonymous alcohol meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we divided uh, if it wasn't working enough or at all. That's that the first two was, it was not working enough. Okay, so one, this is if it wasn't working was, at all. Work, yeah. work at all. Okay. So he tasted by drinking and every bad thing happened to him and he had to get back on track. He tested what by drinking? He tested to determine whether or not he was on track, whether or not he was actually uh, away from the alcohol. Uh-huh. Okay, now I assume at that point, he, had he already decided at that point to let go of it, or this is a process of letting go of it? No, at that point he decided he had let go of it. So he thought he was, he had let go enough, and he wanted to test it. I see. And found I see. out that if okay. he tested it, it didn't, <laughs> he needed to go back to his strategies. I understand. Okay. Okay. And then we put here this uh, a sort of question, after, uh, asking after testing. And for us, he is both a signal emotion and a secondary strategy. Oh, so asking after testing. Yeah. You should huge to urge drink, to drink. Urge to drink, did anything change? And the answer was no. Uh huh. Okay. And so, so, so he tested himself. So he thought, okay, I'm doing okay. Yeah. I'll test it out. And he, and he did some drinking and asked himself, well, do I have the urge to drink? Did anything change? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And the answer was no. Yeah. He didn't have the urge to drink? No. Or he, nothing had changed. He still did have the urge to drink. Nothing had changed. He still had the urge to drink. Right. Okay. He, pushed his hands away saying that the guilt, the remorse, and the anger were coming back. Okay. All right. At what point would you, did, did he let go of drinking? What do you mean? Well. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you know, with their the point I'm interested in, yeah. there, he went through some period where he went, I I'm going to drink, yeah. even though I know I shouldn't. Yeah. And I, I know how to quit, but I need it. Mm -hmm. And I can't help myself. Mm -hmm. And then he came to some point, when mm -hmm. I say point, it may not be a second, but a, mm -hmm. a day or mm -hmm. a certain period, mm -hmm. where he went, no more for me. Yeah. All right? Uh, it doesn't mean he was done with the drinking part. It doesn't yeah. mean he was done with the the cravings and had to mm -hmm. go through, I don't know if he went through withdrawals and he had to go through a period of time where he was tempted and so on, mm -hmm. but, he, but the point I would be interested in mm -hmm. is when he went, no more for me. Now there's work yeah. to do to make yeah. that rea a reality, 
but no more for me. Yeah. Um, I, I guess uh, is when he realized he was losing everything mm -hmm. he loved. He realized he was losing everything. Yeah. And he left. At that moment, he decided he was enough. Uh-huh. Okay. And then came a lot of work to yeah. make yeah. that last, yeah. make that decision a reality yeah. through time. Okay. So there came a dis time where he was losing everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's what we need to know about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make a note here, point where realize losing everything. Okay. Uh, uh, I have a practical consideration here, <laughs> uh, is, which is the time. At f uh, 5 o'clock is like, you know, looming on it. What happens at 5 o'clock? I mean, do people like, the bus comes? Or I could just take people back up there <laughs> to the, the thing. Uh, could we, we could arrange to go a little bit later? We've got cars. I've got a car. OK, um, great, because otherwise things will be different. All right. So I think that's all we need to know about John for right now. OK? All right. How about Jean? John, Jean, and here comes Jim. G. <laughs> when we asked Gene, uh, the turning point, actually there were several turning points. Uh, one of these, and he had tried to quit uh, this theater company several times before. And a major turning point was a performance they were doing at uh, Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., which there was this huge catastrophe behind the scenes. They couldn't get an agreement. That was major. He said, I'm not going to do this anymore. That led into a, sort of a process of praying and, and checking that decision with people he trusted. Praying. praying. Uh, and he would go through cycles of praying and talking to family, talking to uh, his elders, talking to his teachers, talking to parents, and in between there he would also pray. Mm -hmm. a, a turning point in that process was uh, he went to visit a, a female friend of his whom he trusted, and her words to him were, honor the integrity of who you are. That was huge, and that just hit him. And he took that in, and that sort of became his mantra, actually, after that. Um, and I think he was getting a fairly consistent message from the other people he was asking also. Mm -hmm. It was all sort of converging on this one idea. Mm -hmm. um, after this sort of solidifying of this, he made a decision to test his partners one more time, because they, they were planning a tour of Canada. And so he went to them at where they begged him to come back because they couldn't operate without his, his capabilities. He was the responsible one, the one who would plan, the one who would follow through. And they, couldn't, they weren't doing any of that. So he negotiated with them. He said, I would re-enter the process if you will do A, B, and C. Here are your tasks. I need evidence, which they did not supply. <laughs> OK, they did not follow through. Uh, so he tested them, and there was no evidence. And then he went to a sacred place where he prays frequently, built his fire, and checked one more time. And there was a confirmation of his decision. And there was a closure on the decision. And then he went to his partners, and, and his word was, I did it with an attitude. And we talked a little bit about that. At least part of that was the history here had been he would make a decision and they would sort of manipulate themselves through his defenses and get him reengaged. And his attitude was a wall that would not allow them to manipulate him again, basically. I think that's sort of the way it operated. So that was the process as we understood it or got it on paper. Any questions or additions, team members or Gene? 
Yeah. Yes. Good. All right. Uh, Nick. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Okay. You're, you're just too responsive to me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so for Barbara, it's, it's really interesting hearing that about Jean because. Um, it made me realize something we'd missed off here as well. <laughs> and with Barbara, in terms of um, a break point, she, isn't it? Sorry. Oh. Tangled. Is it? I wonder if you pushed it, if you put it in your pocket, yeah, yeah. and it turned it off. You're all right now. Am I all right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to be all right. <laughs> Is that still all right? Okay. You took me well. <laughs> Strangle myself. Um, I realized we missed something important off from here, which was a break point for Barbara. And she described that as one night when she was coming back in the car and she'd fallen asleep in the car and her husband had taken a wrong turning and then turned to her and blamed her. And as I recall, um, an important uh, thing that happened that night was a sort of dissociation. She saw him through new eyes. She saw, I mean, there'd been a long process before that, but that night she saw very clearly how separate he was from her and that you were not responsible for him. So that, that, are those your words? That's what I recall. So that was a, a, that was a key moment. And then her strategy, which was over a period of time, which is why we've done this sort of cyclical um, movement over a period of time, was to get external support. That was critically important from a support group. And through that, she changed her behavior. One thing she did was to stop giving other people advice, stop um, helping others, because that had been a very much part of her taking responsibility. And this whole thing of being responsible for other people and, and recognizing what boundaries were and what she was responsible for and what she wasn't, separating from that. And she started sharing in the group, with the group, with other people, all the things that she'd been carrying herself and opening up with that, which was an important thing. Um, yeah, so she began to take responsibility for herself, for her life, and she found that the more that she did, it was the, the easier it was to let go. So this was a, a cyclical process, a, a continuing process, and in that process, there was a big attitude shift, and it was a process over time. Huh? So that was her attitude strategy. shift in what way? Attitude shift. Um, primarily from being responsible for the, um, her husband and the marriage and the family and everything else. Um, uh, what was symptomatic of that, we, we have in, I think, in the behavior, was that um, she's, okay, um, an attitude shift to taking charge of herself. Uh, I was just thinking of when you were working with the car. At one time, you used to think, oh, she did the car and the plumbing and all these things. Uh, she had responsibilities, and she used to do them and blame her husband for not doing them. A big attitude shift was just to do them. Mm. Uh, an attitude shift was to do stuff for yourself, uh, which was a big difference from before, right? Uh, um, yeah? Okay. Secondary strategies, when it didn't work, well, she went back to the support group to get to get to be me, which is what she emphasized, because that's where she found she was able to become herself. Uh, and when that didn't work, there were other times when she cried and begged for peace of mind. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. She begged for peace of mind. Yeah. Uh -huh. can, I, can I reveal something? Yeah. Yes. And I happened to be there when that came out, and it was, and I begged for peace of mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we stopping now? Uh, yes, we are stopping now. Okay. Now, how about in the strategy? What what pieces do you find? Uh, what patterns do you find in the strategy? Yeah, support all three of them, huh? You know, so John's 
John talking to a supportive person as well as going to AA meetings where there are supportive people. So they're going to somebody outside of them, both for support and for an external perspective on what's going on with me in my situation. He's, he's getting an external perspective and support. Uh, Gene was getting a, a support from the outside, both through praying and, and uh, from, uh, you know, through his ancestors, elders, parents, people in the community, people he knew, getting a perspective uh, and support through them. Uh, and so is Barbara. Barbara was getting uh, support and perspective through uh, these groups that she was in. Al Anon. Al Anon, whatever, the Al Anon. Uh, just out of curiosity, did you, uh, this, here's a support group. Uh, did you also um, go to friends, people you. Uh, lots. lots. So it wasn't just a group, it was friends, family. Uh -huh. I find that very, very. Um, well, I find that personally interesting, actually. I mean, that, that to me is one of the big eye-openers of what we've discovered here in all three of them. Because I know just constitutionally, me as David, um, you know, when I'm in these kinds of situations where I'm facing these great difficulties, such as, you know, wanting to let go of something and not being able to, being afraid to, that my tendency has always been to take care of it entirely myself, inside myself, and not go to others, you know. And, and this makes it very clear that that is an essential, important uh, step in making it possible to let go. So, you know, that, <laughs> all right, so, <clears throat> uh, so there's seeking support and perspective from others, however that comes. Unless I don't understand AA, AA actually has a strong component of beliefs in God and so on and so forth on those steps. So that some of the support actually is spiritual in some way, that that's actually, it's not just other people, but each one of them has a turn to Let me put it this way, because one thing, I know, um, Bar you correct me, but I, when I was there, when Barbara did this, <laughs> um, uh, she was very quick to say, well, you know, it wasn't to God, but it was more to, I wasn't, I wasn't praying. Oh, maybe it was to God. I don't do, a fine, I don't do a formal praying anymore. Yeah, but here's, here's the sense I have yeah. of that getting to a point where one genuinely feels and recognizes that what's, that what's going on is bigger than me. You know, I, that this is, this is more than I can, necess can handle myself. I need something that's bigger than I am to help me through this. And that's the sense. And that could be, could be God, it could be the ancestors, it could be spirits, it could be, and I, and I don't think it needs to be embodied you know, and, or, or specified. It can just be just a sense of this. There's something, this is bigger than me. I, in a sense, I'm surrendering to the fact that I can't control this or make this come out the way I want it to be. Something has to give something has to change. So um, I'm a little floundering, but that's kind of the way I would describe I like it. You like that? Okay. All right. So, um, and, you know, and how we do that, you know, the form that that takes will, could, would depend on the person. Um, but I think there, in all cases, there is a, uh, maybe I'll just say for now, I'm, I'm trying to move quickly here, uh, rec Cognition of um, recognition of um, of needing a greater a guidance, greater than oneself, guidance or help. Okay. Okay, this is. All right, let's go back to that word surrender, huh? Yeah. <laughs> surrender to the. 
the, it's that to the the that this is bigger. Well. So, a bit. The, Sorry, could I have a quick explanation? Yeah. I don't see why we should change. Uh, that's my personal view, and I don't know how we can rearrange. Well, there is a. I, actually, I have an airplane that I'm going oh, to have to catch. Okay, so, <laughs> I do have some. I do have some leeway, okay. but <laughs> not. I for, no, I don't have the evening, unfortunately. Um, that's okay. I've, I've got my plans already for me. Uh, so I have for now, well, let me just say, to put us all at my ease, uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> uh, that um, um, you know, what we're engaged in here at this moment, that is, as a group trying to create this model, normally I would never recommend doing. You know, this actually is a mistake if you really want to come up with a model because We've got all these different people, and everybody's going to have their own way, you know, their own personal way of making sense out of the information and actually capturing it in the model. And so we've got way too many cooks uh, to think that we're going to come up with a model that everybody goes, yep, that's it, perfect, we all agree. That isn't going to happen here. You'll find this process much easier when you're doing it on your own, <laughs> or maybe with one other person, and you're pulling it together. Um, uh, so, let's. Uh, we want to set aside uh, for now the notion that we're going to come up with a definitive description here as a group. We won't, um, but we are going to get out the primary patterns, and I think we'll be able to describe what are the essential patterns that go into making this possible. Um, just for now, and it's, I realize it's not captured well, and I um, don't have the time to do that just yet, is uh, surrendering to that, surrendering to the fact that this is bigger than I am. And how, what form that takes depends on the person. Anything else about the strategy description? This is exactly the one, that's the one other thing I had noted down, okay. was that exactly what you're talking about. And, it would, and I'm not even sure what to think about it at this moment, but it was very interesting that, that there was this, that in, none, in no three of these cases, was it the case that they went to, um, that's it, I'm done, end of story. It was, I'm done, and I'm, and I'm going to test that out. <laughs> you know, there's something like that going on. So, so that was very interesting. Um, yeah. I, I would like to make a comment. In yeah. John's case, he did mention to us that uh, it was difficult to say that there was one exact point when the, uh, there was this thing of letting it go at one exact point. It was, it was a decision to do it. And then there was a process involved, mm -hmm. and it's it's sort of an ongoing process. Yeah, it's kind of like here's the way. Now, what's coming to me now, and I don't know if this is a good one, but it's that I get from that from John's is that this this sense of okay, I've made the decision. In my decision is made. I'm done. Now, is that actually manifest in my behavior? You know, is that true? In you know, is that now? Uh, uh, a decision that, let me just try it differently. So I made this decision, how do I know it's really solid, that it's real? Well, it needs to be tested out in behavior, in the world somehow. So I get that, you know, he's testing out, am I really done here? 
Um, uh, and I got much the same experience with Gene, made this decision, and then there was this test, well, am I really done? Because he you know, opened up the door again, well, you know, I'll, one more chance, here's one more chance. But at that point, as I understood it, he actually said, you know, no more, no more of this. Now let's see if that's true. No. <laughs> said, no, no more drinking. Let's see if that's true. Um, now, I'm not quite sure about uh, with Barbara. If I could just ask something. I think yeah. Barbara is about a strengthening of what she was going for. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what happened. And so, uh, if you can call that testing, I don't know, but it was a strengthening of yeah. uh, So maybe the test was able to do it. Well, maybe that's the way to think about this testing, that it is a way for the person to, um, in a sense, prove to oneself that this is a real, the decision really has been made because one is behaving in accordance with it. You know? And maybe, it, maybe that's the way to think about it. Well, no, I see, I think, no, it is behavior. It is behavior. Because at this point, you know, these people, in each case, have on the inside, have come to a point where they go, no, I'm no more, I'm done with that. And we know that through experience that maybe in the past they'd made similar kinds of decisions, but they still, uh, it, when it actually came into the situation, they, uh, they gave up on themselves. They gave up on who they were, right? So now here, once again, I've gotten to this point where, and even though it's incredibly strong and so on, I've made this decision, how do I know for sure that I won't fall back again? Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to test it out. Mm -hmm. I've got to put my you know, feet in the fire again right, to find out, to really know that this, this, has, this decision has been made. And I think that's an important step, to really have evidence, not just, oh, I feel different, because you know I've done that before, mm -hmm. but to have evidence in the, in the external world and behavior that goes, that proves, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't go back to the way things were. But that is one thing, too, though, that they get back to these ways of saying that each one of them went through a change of behavior. Would you say that? I'm sorry? Didn't each one make a definitive change in behavior in their life? When? Their, in their strategy. They actually changed their behavior. Uh, so you have to say more about that. For example. Well, for John, it was literally um, changing the way he operated. He didn't take a drink and didn't need a drink. And for Gene, it was, I'm no longer going to uh, support this dysfunctional group that they don't do something in us, so I'm always rescuing them. And Barbara was a rescuer. She said, I'm done with that. I'm, change, I'm changing my behavior. Mm -hmm. So it's a very definite change. Well, they, they say, I, I say I'm, to say I'm going to change that behavior, what's evidence that you've actually done that? Well, that you behave differently in the same situation. In the same situation, exactly. That means you need to go back to, if you're really going to test it out, well, you need to I'm plunge thinking. yourself back into that same situation to find out Will I, can, have I actually made this decision? And have, that's what, isn't that what the testing was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right because that's what I think. That's what you think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very simple. <laughs> All right, so let's finish this off here. How about, let's hear about sustaining emotion, external behavior, and if there are any contributing factors, let's hear about those too. So, for John, Asanda. She's up, she's down, she's up, she's down. <laughs> down, can I stand here? Okay. Oh, but you can't, yeah. <laughs> so the whole world can hear it! <laughs> so. Uh, for John, his sustaining emotion at first was fear of relapse. Okay? 
And then uh, we've got experience of joy after initial stages. Initial stages being? Um, after he realized that um, he has already done some steps. I mean, he has already uh, stopped drinking. And so at first, there was fear. OK? Mm -hmm. uh, about be external behavior, first of all, he said reading supportive materials uh, to understand uh, uh, as better as he could uh, the problem. Mm -hmm. OK? And then talk to people a lot and develop a support network. As a contributing, contributing factor, we put um, AA meeting mm -hmm. and rehab facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Jean, so, Jim for Jean. I feel like we developed this quite as much as we did the other parts of this. Um, and I don't know how, the things that he mentioned were these, that during this process, uh, he found himself holding his hands in this position a lot, just sort of instinctively. Like he's keeping a lot of stuff inside until the decision is firmed up. He's not going to speak prematurely until he knows for certain. He's, he's done this before. He's spoken prematurely and then not followed through. And during this time, he did a lot of this. Okay. Um, and then the creation of this wall. And there, was this, there, were, there were several gestures which were important. The one that Diane mentioned of this thing about, he, you, Gene did this a lot. It was about, I'm done. I'm wiping the slate clean. I'm out of here. There was a lot that he was, would say in this gesture. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like the ritual to, re, to support sort of what he had decided to do. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was this wall, which was sort of the, the attitude that he developed when he finally confronted his partners and said, I am finished. Um, there was sort of this wall that, that was the attitude he developed. Um, the other thing, and, and I don't. I'm just sort of ad-libbing this part, but this was part of his story. Um, he did have another thing that he, so when he said he was done with this particular theater company, he did move fairly quickly to another artistic group and got into another theater performance. Uh, but we talked about that, and that was not actually part of this. He would have made this decision anyway, whether that had been in the wings or not. Uh, about the sustaining emotions, we probably didn't develop this enough either uh, or ask him enough about it. We did say, I think ask, uh, when it becomes difficult to live in a way that honors the integrity of who you are, what keeps you going? And the word he spoke immediately was honor. Honor is the thing that, that sustains me, uh, that, that provides the perseverance. And then he sort of... You talked about courage of heart and strength. And there was a conversation earlier about strength. Of personal power was the other word, too, wasn't it, I think? So that sense of personal power, personal strength, uh, was another part of this, the sustaining emotion side of it. OK. All right. Did I miss significant things? OK. Let me, let me say one other thing, because I feel like I didn't say that fully enough. There was, in this part of it, there's a sense that he's never alone. Uh, and that's really important. The ancestors are there. His understanding, his God and his understanding is there. And that's a really big part of this process for him that I didn't feel like I said nearly strongly enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But by by six, I'm going to have to be out of here. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> uh, okay, sustaining emotion for uh, Barbara was, uh, she mentioned fear, and, and, and that was pretty strong. Um, at the same time, a recurring sense of relief. Um, she did mention something about courage that popped up. Um, so we're, we're not quite sure about this, but something she felt very strongly about was a sense of determination. I'm not sure if determination is an emotion, but it was something that sustained you throughout, wasn't it? Well, one can feel determined. Yes. And that's an emotion. So, determined. so we thought, you know, it's what she's saying, and it's really important, so we, we put that there. So there was a mixture of those. And a signal emotion was um, excitement. As she was gaining strength and becoming more of herself, she got this signal emotion of excitement repeatedly. Um, external behavior, I realize what we've done, in fact, is in a sense describe what she was doing when she arrived, rather than in the process. Uh, perhaps it's also a description of some of the things that were happening in the process. So first of all, she was... Um, she stopped griping and giving advice to others, which is something she'd done before. Uh, she was doing the things, uh, as I mentioned before, she did what she ordin ordinarily did, all of her responsibilities, without griping and giving advice. That was a significant thing. She kept in touch with her support group. That was also significant. That meant going regularly. Um, she would go places by herself without her husband and feel really good about that. Um, she took lots and lots of classes, personal growth, NLP prac, um, lots and lots of things, and spent lots of money on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what number five was. Uh, have I missed something out there? That was probably me uh, processing. Was there anything else? So that's it. One thing I want to add um, yes. that I didn't, the attitude thing, I, I want to mention it because it was so clear in this. I, wanna, I developed a real attitude about this is it. And when the family invited him to a kind of, uh, birthday party, because it was somebody else's birthday party, I called and said, you're not to do this. I divorced him because I don't want him at the birthday parties. And it was kind of hard on the family. But it was an attitude of, this is it. <laughs> Says, it was also a behavior. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So you... So that's number five, <laughs> whatever we call it. Attitude. Now you don't need this. You've got one. I do. <laughs> okay. So, how about in the land of uh, um, emotions? Is there anything to be said in terms of um, pattern and emotions across these folks? It's a democracy, right? <laughs> uh huh. So, so, um, well, now, we're, we're, what happens to you? Okay. Well, one thing I wanted to note is that both, both uh, Barbara and John had fear as one of the, you know, kind of the background motions. Which makes sense to me when I st step into this, <laughs> this, because I, you know, I'm on the edge. My, as I put up there, myself is on the line here. Am I going to um, honor that, or am I going to let it go, violate it? Yeah, and so there is that. Now, and, but it, but in neither one of their cases is it just fear. That. It's, there's the fear and the, the excitement about being oneself or the, you know, the joyfulness. There is some kind of sustaining emotion of, of, um, of um, um, going forward in a wonderful way. Whether, uh, you know, here it says, um, well, it's got joy here. Strength, courage of heart, 
and uh, being determined. Uh, excitement, I, I actually would say that that's not, I would almost be tended, tempted if, had I been there to put that more in, as a sustaining emotion. That is that there's a sense of, you know, in the background all the time of, I, I'm doing something really dangerous and wonderful. <laughs> it's really dangerous and wonderful. You know, and um, so I would I would suggest that that would that's the case there. So I think maybe the thing to um, I, I guess with it, well, right now I would say that uh, that there's both ongoing, maybe in a, a cycle, you know, a, a cyclic thing, you know, of some kind of fear with excitement or courage, or something like that, that maybe, you know, that that's just kind of cycling back and forth behind the experiential scenes. So that's, I would suppose that right now. How about in the external behavior? So in John's, we've got, John's is, those are all examples of something we've already talked about in this primary strategy, that, uh, that of going for external uh, support and, and pers perspective. You can get that not only from people, but you can also get it from things that have been written, you know, about people going through what you're going, going through. And then, of course, he's got the developing the support network, talking to people. Yes, Rachel. Um, in Barbara's, I know from talking to her earlier that her ideas were stop talking to people, that's a very going internal thing and then you were looking at a self-reflection thing. Mm -hmm. And with um, Gene's with his hands up with the wall was like, again, I'm going inside, I need to check out what's going on inside, I'm not letting the outside come in right now. Yeah, and I think there's something related to that is what, she, which is what Barbara said about, it's almost like dissociating, which is when she talked about um, seeing her husband differently. Seems to be part of that too. Dissociating. Well, there is this experience of separation, of being separate from whatever it was that you were. Well, you're letting go, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, let's, letting you're letting go. <laughs> One would, you know, one's not surprised to find that at the point where you go, let go, that there is some kind of experience of moving away from, separation. Uh, something that comes in between. There's got to be, you know, I would, i not surprised to find that there would be some uh, representations and experience of uh, moving away from, being separate from, above, apart. Uh, that makes sense. So I think that that's probably something that is a, uh, it reflects a submodal, a submodal submodality shift that occurs in, in one's experience. Uh, so there's the um, subjective experience of separation. However, that occurs. I mean, it could, I think it could, can occur visually, representationally, um, as a, a sense of space. I, I think it could occur in lots of ways. Uh, yours isn't seeing, uh, one of the ways in which yours was is seeing, I don't have anything in common with this guy. <laughs> That's separation. That is absolutely separation. Okay. All right. Now, so what do we got here? So here are the patterns, you know, how we would just orchestrate this or put this together. Oh, let me, ah, now I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I almost forgot to say this. You, got, you folks might have walked out of this room thinking that, when, you know, having the model, that the form the model takes is the array. 
you know, okay, so now what are the, you know, let's fill out the belief template and the primary strategy and so on for this ability. But that is actually not the form I would put a model in. The belief, uh, the array is an information gathering tool. It's, it's something we use to gather together uh, uh, information in relation to these distinctions that we have. When it comes to actually now setting out the model, describing the model itself, I in, probably would not put it in the array form, uh, but instead go, okay, now how do I want to describe this model? I'm okay, you know, if it fits into the array, that's okay. Uh, but don't feel that it needs, it, that the model, uh, so now we've got a model that we want to present to the world, to other people. Are you going to hand them an array? I don't think so. Here, do that. The array is going to mean nothing to them. The only reason this means anything to us is because we've spent time learning what these boxes mean, you know, what the significance is of these boxes. It's not going to mean anything to them. So the presentation or the form that the model will take, uh, a model that we want for other people, will be some, some kind of you know, narrative description. So what are we going to be saying in our, in our model? Here. Well, I think one of the things we would be going for in our model, or we would want to have in our model of uh, uh, being able to let go of something you're afraid of, is that what needs to be important to you, what needs to be your focus of your attention, is um, being free to be who you are. That that needs to be the focus of your attention, being free to be who you are. Um, and that that then needs to be connected to, you know, your, your, whether or not you're free to be who you are, that is the criterion, is then connected to either going towards or away from what is really important to you as a, as a human being. So, for instance, I'll give you my own example. If we were to find out what the motivating cause effect, what, what is you know, inherently motivating for me, what I call the prime motivator, a prime motivator. For me, it's about participating fully in life. Participating fully in life. Now, can I, uh, you know, ignore or give up or violate um, uh, being free to be who I am? Yes, I can do that. I've done it a lot in my life. I've done it a lot in my life. However, as soon as I connect uh, violating being free to be who I am to not participating in life any, in life, if, if I, if, in other words, if it means that if I'm not free to be who I am means that I can't participate fully in life, that's a big deal to me. And if I get that by, by being free to who being free to be myself, that means I can participate fully in life. That's a big deal. That's motivating. So one of the things I would want to do is I would want to uh, uh, establish that the criterion is uh, be free to be oneself. Free to be oneself, and that that is causally related to something that is a, a, a essential aspect of who I am, at my level of identity, if you like, what I like to call my prime motivator, and I'm holding representations both towards and away, that is that being free to be who I am both leads towards fulfilling my who, my, who I am as a person, uh, my prime motivator. And if I'm not free to be who I am, then that takes me away from you know, my prime motivator. I also think that an, so another important piece of the model is that one needs to have a sense of being responsible to others, that is that what I, the decisions I make and what I do in my life 
has an impact on other people around me. So it's not just about me. You know, I, what I, the things I do is connected to other people around me. Um, uh, personal awareness and honesty is necessary. So that's so I, in order. So it's essential to be personally aware and honest in order to be free, to be who I am. Uh, so part of the model is learning to be honest with myself. That's a big deal, you know, to be aware, recognize what's true for me, and then be honest about it, with, with just with me. So that's another step. Um, another part is having some way to know that I can and will be okay. Now that can come in many different ways. It could come from, you know, remembering other times when I've been through hard times and made tough decisions, and I survived and it was okay. It might be from getting reassurance through other people, um, uh, other people who perhaps have been through the same kind of thing. Uh, it may simply be recognizing that I have a lot of certain strengths that will carry me through these times. But I need to have some way to know that I will be OK. Uh, you need to seek support from others. Talk about it with other people and seek support from them and from their, seek their perspective on what's going on with me and my situation. Uh, come get to a point of surrender where I recognize that, you know, this is bigger than me. <laughs> this is bigger than me. And I can't just squeeze, squeeze this out the way I want it to. This is bigger than me, and I need, that means, that they, for me, that's a, there's a sense of, um, Of um, well, I guess I, I I really don't have the good words for this at this point. But it, for me, there's a sense of that um, there is there is some truth to be told about who I am and my situation, what I'm doing. That is bigger than what I'm just paying attention to here. Okay. Uh, interestingly, uh, this, that there is a testing, uh, there's some kind of testing. There is, there's, you want some kind of evidence in behavior that you know, once you get to that point where you go over that threshold that goes, no. Uh, and you get that subjective experience of separation. Go, no, I, I, this is, I'm letting go of that. There's still this like little period, there's this phase, there's something that happens after that, some kind of test in, in behavior, in the real world, in the world, that serves as evidence or proof that this is a real, that this, this, this is a real, letting go, that this is a real letting go. And it may take many, you know, it, and it might be that this happens, goes through uh, um, cycles. You may discover you really haven't let go. <laughs> and then you're going back to um, uh, being honest with yourself, being aware, being honest, uh, holding that what's important is being free to be who you are and struggling with that until, again, you get that enough a sufficient separation that when you go to test it, it stays. All right. Now, um, so I think we're going to have to leave it right there. Um, So I'm going to make a deal with you guys that I need everybody to agree to it, uh, except Paul, because he's not here. <laughs> uh, um, 
uh, something that we didn't get to talk about was uh, acquisition. And I, I want you to have some understanding of acquisition. So what I just, as I've told some people, just last week I finished the book on modeling. And there, there is a chapter, of course, on acquisition. Um, and what I would be willing to do is to uh, make that available to you, a copy of that chapter. Uh, it's, I think, quite clear, and it might even be better than listening to me talk about it, actually, come to think of it. But uh, anyway, um, uh, what I would do is make it available to you and just ask you to keep it to yourselves and not, you know, copy it and spread it around. So if that's, that's the only way I can think of to kind of deal with the fact that we've run out of time. All right? And then you, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll talk with you about just how to make that happen. And, um, and I'll make sure that you get that in the next uh, day or two, okay? All right? So you have it fresh to, to use for um, the rest of the work you're doing. All right. Um, let, me, uh, let me tell you a story. this boy who was orphaned. And so he was sent to live with his grandfather in a little farmhouse out in the middle of the, the country, in the middle of nowhere. Just this big old farmhouse sitting out in the middle of nowhere. The boy was okay with that. He, he liked his grandfather. When he arrived and grandfather was showing him around the house, showed him through all the various rooms, took him upstairs, showed him through all the rooms up there, and then took him up into the attic. Said, oh, this is a great room. You can come up here and play around. There's all kinds of old stuff, interesting old stuff up here in the attic. And the grandfather told him he's welcome to go in any room he wants in the house, and he can play with anything he wants in the attic. The only thing he can't do is open that big wooden chest over there in the corner. And so the grandfather left him up in the attic. And of course, the very first thing that this boy did was go over and open up that big wooden chest. And he opened it up, and when he looked inside, the only thing that was in there was a big book. And he hauled that book out of the chest, and he took it over to the little window in the attic so he could see it in the light. He set it down on his lap, and he saw that it was a book of, about Japan. It was just a book full of photographs of Japan. And he opened it up, and he started looking at it, and there was just one beautiful photograph after another of Japan. After a while of looking at these pictures, all of a sudden a shadow fell over him. And he looked up, and there's Grandpa staring down at him, and, you know, very sternly. And the boy looked up at him, and, and the boy said, you know, Grandpa, I was going to look in there. Grandfather said, yeah, I know. And he sat down beside him, and they started looking through these pictures together. And the boy asked him, why did you keep this book? And Grandfather said, well, when I was your age, my father, who had been to Japan, came back, and told me all these wonderful stories about how beautiful and great it was, and it brought me this book. And I had wanted ever since then to go to Japan. And the boy asked him, did you ever go? Grandfather said, no, I never made it to Japan. Well, weeks passed.